I think MGUS is such an open area for us. Again, not all MGUS is the same, just like no, not all smoldering myeloma is the same. And I think what we need to understand better is when does it change from a normal phenotype into a malignant phenotype. So we know that monoclonal gammopathies are a continuous spectrum. Yes, we use this 10% plasma cell to differentiate MGUS from smoldering, but it's a very arbitrary number because if I do a bone marrow biopsy and I do 9% um, MGUS, if I do it at 11%, I'm smoldering myeloma. That doesn't make sense for a patient. So we're trying to understand at a continuum, what is that transition from a normal phenotype? Yes, you have monoclonal gammopathy. Yes, you have some certain genetic abnormalities, but it hasn't changed into a malignant phenotype, into now it's destined to go towards myeloma, and then what is the risk for it to go into myeloma? And this is when you risk stratify it. And it's basically taking the clinical data into a biological lens and trying to understand understand better, can we redefine people so that we understand better who's truly at risk of developing disease and watching them more carefully or treating them and who potentially may never develop the disease. They do have genomic abnormalities in their cells, but they're not cancer cells. They're not destined to go towards uh, malignancy because they're still in a normal phenotype. And I think there's so much science in this normal phenotype with genetic abnormalities. We know now that if you just take skin biopsies from our lids or from our esophagus, it's full of mutations. In fact, all of us are walking around with mutations everywhere in our cells. That doesn't mean that we're full of cancer cells. They have some genetic change, but they have not acquired the malignant phenotype. And that distinction will probably be very useful for us to understand the difference between an MGUS with normal phenotype and an MGUS that's going towards a malignant phenotype.